ago, and I'm right now sharing a fantastic lunch with two very distinguished guests that we have at the car this year. I call her Queen Sammy, but you all know her as Samantha Hart. And for all you Power Rangers veterans out there, he's more than just a ranger. He is a veteran voice actor now, Johnny Bosch. Guys, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, we are in Honolulu. <laughs> uh, and they really like spam here. And I'm trying to open this uh, spam masubi. Ah, uh, yes. The spam crack, yes. Basically, We've been surviving off of that for it's like three spam, days now. Spam sushi. <laughs> like a, a bed of rice with a slice of spam wrapped around with seaweed. Now, let's, let's see if I can do a zoom in on this thing because, dear God, now there's a bed of rice, folks, and then there's a pastorpedic bed of rice. And that's a pastorpedic right there. Yeah. Now, you got your carbs, your vegetable, and your green. meat. The question? Spam has always been a question as a meat, so we'll just leave it as that. Alright, so here it goes. Should we have a drum roll? I'm afraid. <laughs> Alright. It tastes like spam on rice. <laughs> exactly what I thought it would taste like. <laughs> I'm surprised you know that you know what Spam tasted like. I've had Spam before. See, this has been officially 15 years since I've had Spam, so like, I've got the unique gift that Spam gives you. If you're hungry, it will take care of that. You don't question it, you just go ahead and scarf it down. And later, uh, it comes out running. Yes, and a lot of devoted <laughs> bathroom time. That's why me and Sam are eating crepes. Yes, we're cheating our diets today. Banana strawberry crepe, nonetheless. Yes, and I was a coward. I just stuck with banana and I quit. Well, today, folks, like I said, we're doing a double feature this time. This is my first time doing two guests at the same time, so they will both be answering the same questions. Oh, yes, yes, we are going to eat properly. Pinky's in the air. Put my elbows on the table. <laughs> yes, only here in Hawaii. Okay, so let's start off with the first question I love to ask. What inspired you? to do voice acting. <laughs> I was a, um, an animator first. Um, I didn't want to get into voice acting. Um, I had always I just wanted to be an animator and take over Disney. Um, but somebody said that I had an annoying voice and a couple of weeks later I had an audition and I got a role. And I've been doing uh, roles for um, for shows over at ADD Films for, I think I worked there for about eight years, and um, and it was for the Austin branch called Monster Island Studios, and uh, well, um, now I, I do work with Funimation, but I, my role has changed, I'm not doing voice acting anymore, but um, instead I'm doing directing and producing, so woo! Oh, she's definitely going to get some parts from you. Alright. Mr. Johnny. The more you eat this, the better it gets, actually. <laughs> Thus is the addictive quality of spam. Yes. <laughs> That's why I've had five so far this week. They, they, you've had five of them? Yeah, they're actually not bad the more you eat them. It's like a little teriyaki stuff going yeah. on top. Yeah, I, I think it's the marinade that they put on it that helps it. And right now, the current debate here at the con, actually, you can get that at the 7-Eleven, the concession stand in the convention center, and over here in the mall. And right now, there's a war over who thinks which one is the best one. There, everyone cannot say an exact place. It's all divided between those three locations. Me personally, I don't care. It's a little hungry, I gotta get it. It's two, it's two bucks, you can't beat it. I like the one, the Spam Musubi that has the egg. The scrambled egg. Ever had that egg one? Egg on it? Yeah. It's good. I would try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I got into voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is full. Uh, it wasn't something that I thought I want to become a voice actor. I just wanted to act. And uh, after Power Rangers, I did uh, I did an independent film where all the audio had to be redubbed because the sound guys were done. Um, and so when I went back into 
redub it, the producer heard me and thought that I had a decent hero voice. He brought me in to audition for Trigun, and I got the part for Bash. And I just started rolling into other things. Okay, okay. And guys, in case you wonder why they had to keep looking up, uh, the person interviewing them is six foot nine, so yep. tell us some slack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, you gotta do the ho, ho, ho. Oh, you wanna do Green Giant, really? <laughs> Can you? Ho, ho, ho. Green Giant. Alright, I'm gonna pan out here, and we're gonna answer another question. When you first picked up your first roles, what was it like trying to, des to decide what type of voice to go with? You wanna go first, or do I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. He's using the, he's using the, he's using the, he's using the, he's Well, uh, actually, when I walked into the sound room the first time, um, I didn't pick the voice. Actually, 95% of the time, I never picked the voice that I would do. Uh, it was always the director. Um, you know, you'd, the director would uh, tell you to say this line. And would tell me like what what the character was feeling at the scene. And, you know, so it would show me uh, what was you know the scene that I was going to be acting out in, and then um, and then I would say the line, and then the director would be like, "Can, can you do it more in a sing-song voice, or, or can, can you do it a little bit more raspy? Can you can you make it pitched a little bit higher? Can you pitch it a little bit lower?" And so it's like trial by error. Yeah, that's, that's how voices are created. Now, with these directors, did you feel that they were giving you a good leeway on trying to do your voices, or do you feel they were too demanding at times? Uh, I follow direction pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as long as the, the director gave me good, good direction, I, I'd always you know, do whatever is necessary to, mm -hmm. to, to get him happy. So. Um, I never thought that there was anything that was too demanding because uh, yeah, anything doing? with uh, We're to anything where you know it's like the director gives you more more advice, mm -hmm. you know, it just helps out more with the show. So. What about you? Yes, uh, I think he's done with the spin. I am. I don't know. Uh, you know, I th I feel kind of the same way. I think most of the time. Uh, well, I mean, like with the first thing with the Try Guy, they just heard my voice and thought I had a decent tone, I guess, to it. Um, and so they brought me in. And they actually, I don't know if they had somebody else doing Bash already, because they played me at English dub, and then they played me Japanese, and they said, can you do something more like the Japanese? Mm -hmm. um, which was, and I heard it, and I was like, okay, it's kind of just whatever my natural voice sounds like. A little, little pinch on it, not, not much, though. Um, so... I think I just really kind of, I listen to the tonal quality of the character if they give me an option or they, or it's like, we heard you in this, can you do that voice in this? Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I think Klaus was like the first time that I, I did a different voice, like the young kid voice. Uh, and then, uh, and then Claire and Hey Guy J, I did sort of a, a little pitched up higher voice. So I didn't really play around with it too much as far as like voice acting, because I never really thought of myself as a voice actor, but I, I more thought of myself as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for me it's more of uh, trying to be able to deliver within whatever voice I'm doing. Um, I've just been fortunate enough to get a lot of decent roles, and the unfortunate thing is a lot of times that role is very similar to my natural range. Right. So a lot of times it's like this range, you know? Ichigo is very similar to Nero, um, you know, and even Lelouch has that same quality that Ichigo would have. Uh, I think about it more of a, again, just as I just try to deliver the performance within the voice and less, what should I do with this voice to make it different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I do sometimes when it's a character that's like supposed to be, you know, some 12 or something. You know? Now, that's a good question that how is a voice actor, especially ones who come from an acting background, I was going to divide an answer. Do you miss the acting more, or do you like the voice acting more? Because there's a distinct difference. There's going out, being in front of a camera, doing scenes, to being behind, just, just doing the voice. What do you, at this point in time, because you've done it so long now, 
what do you feel you prefer more? You know, well, there are times like when I'm doing a voiceover role, like Nero, mm -hmm. um, but more than just voice, because I did do motion, but, well, like Ichigo, where the character is something that I really enjoy playing, and there's there's something in that character that, that I can really draw into. Um, but it is limiting, because I'm limited to what that artist already drew, you know, which is off of what Japanese actor did. Um, so I do, I think, lean more towards on-camera and stuff. Um, bigger risk. Um, I could blow it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I really, I, I do enjoy all kinds of forms of being creative. Um, well, now I'm doing a lot more live-action stuff than I am um, obviously, uh, voice acting. I really do miss voice acting. I love it a lot. Um, to me, it's more of a stress relief. Uh, what I used to do is, um, the director would always play Japanese uh, audio for me, and I would mix audio as best as I can. Um, thankfully, with this, voice right here, you know, it's, it's not that hard. Um, and a lot of times uh, I understand the Japanese dialogue that's being uh, told, that's being said, and so basically just mimic exactly, you know, it's like how uh, the previous actor or actress uh, was doing it. So I wouldn't exactly say it's pretty much acting as much as being. Um, but I feel that it's more like, you know, it's like, if I, if I had a bad day at work in the animation studio, I'd walk into the, uh, into the sound and stand in front of that microphone. The director goes, scream something, do a war cry. It's like, and it just feels so good to just sit there and just go, ah, <laughs> top of your lungs and just start yelling things. Or, or when a character is like something that's completely out of your, your goal, you know, it's like, I'm a pretty bubbly character, but when I get to play a bad guy, like a really evil, like little annoying character, um, it's, it's a it's a nice stress relief because you know in action, unfortunately, um, you know it's like if you fit a specific model type, um, you don't get it roles, um, and the reason why I get roles is normally because I. I'm friends with a lot of people, so um, that's how it is. But if I didn't have those friends, then I wouldn't get those parts because I'm chubby and you know short and just, yeah, average-looking looking person. Whereas you know, in anime, I can be a hot, busty babe with this tiny waist right there and you know legs that go on for miles. So I like voice acting better. From speaking from a fan, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, um, when you're hot, you know, and from the parties we've had, you already know this sort of thing. Two, um, the girls in anime we make fun of because we don't know how they are able to stand up to how they're drawn in the first place, let alone keep their balance. So believe me, there's no comparison. We'd they're rather like, have real life. Like Dolly Parton. Yeah, you know what? I pray, I pray for that woman. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna skip, you we're pray gonna skip for that. her to come over to your house? What? No, I pray for her to be able to keep down and not have a bad back. Because <laughs> that, that just is important right there. Um, one thing I like for the fans to know, and this is one of the purposes of Best of Anime, is to know more about who their, um, their voice actors are. Now, voice actors is just one part of you guys' life. So, what would you guys know about? Now, I know, Johnny, you definitely want to talk about your band, so please put that in there. And I heard briefly you say you're picking. So that and also I want to hear more about the work you go with children. So let's let's let these guys know all the other stuff that you guys decide to voice after. Okay, you wanna start? You can pimp out your, your band and Pimp them bands. Pimp them. I have a band <laughs> <laughs> called I Shine. E Y E S H I N E. Um and uh, again, it's just something else I can do uh, creatively um, that when I'm up there and we're playing and, and fans are singing back songs that I wrote, uh, it's much more rewarding then 
if kids are yelling bankai, you know, because that's not my creation, although maybe I have. I've said that a few times, uh, but the music is really my creation. It's something that I'm doing from my heart, putting down on a piece of paper and singing. Uh, so that to me is more rewarding to find a connection with people or fans through that. Um, other than that, I have cat-like reflexes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Three-legged cat with one eye. Um, really? No. Oh, uh, That would not be a very good <laughs> cat. Easy to catch. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, that I, I write. I, I actually like directing not voiceover stuff. I like directing uh, live action. I love, I have an eye for camera work, I believe. Um, it may be a crooked eye, uh, but I, for me, I think anything that I can do creatively. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm not like stupid, but I'm not like really smart either. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm okay with things, but for me it's like, I don't know, I just have more passion for doing things creatively. There's also to put it, you know. And just to piggyback on that real quick, uh, this is, because uh, I don't know the next time I'm going to run into you at a convention, but there was a director who was giving me advice on me doing my show, and he said, the only thing to stop here is from just picking up a camera and shoot. And it can be from a cell phone camera or whatever it is, pick it up, start shooting, and just get out there. And I have been happier ever since. I've been accumulating all the cameras I have, and I'm just sitting there and filming, yeah. and just getting into it. So I know what he was telling me was the truth, and it feels great. Yeah, I think anything that you're passionate about, or anything you want, you know, you have to just, you do, you just have to go out and do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, let's, okay, for my, uh, music, for, uh, for my, what, what, what I do with music. Uh, when I first wanted to start a band, I was, someone laughed in my face and said, ha, I laughed in my face, like full on in my face, laughed in my face and said, oh, what, are you going to sing? Ah, I just laughed in my face, like for real. And I was like, I just couldn't understand that. I was like, well, why would you do that, you know? And this was a friend of mine. I was like, why would you do that to like hurt me like that, you know? I didn't say anything. I was just like, well, I mean, that's what I, I just told him, well, that's what I wanted to do, you know? Um, but, but, and I could have given up right then. I could have been like, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should just not do it. You know, or let those doubts sink, sink in and, and start living out of me. But uh, no, I was like, you know what? No. Who's going to tell me what I can and can't do? You know? There you go. We can do anything we want to do. You know? It's just a matter of picking up the camera and shooting. You know? yep. or, or just grabbing the guitar and playing or picking up the pen and drawing something. Um, you just got to do it. Right, well, I'll back that up. I heard him say that. I'm, I'm actually crying. <laughs> Putting on his shades so that we don't see. <laughs> don't tell him what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, just for that, just for my my guts. Yeah, go ahead. It's your turn. Um. Okay. Like, okay, I'm a dork. What was the question again? <laughs> tell tell your fans a little bit about what you do. Oh, that time for voice acting. Um. Well. I'm a nerd at heart. I've been going to anime conventions forever um, since, the, since God knows when. Um, I don't even remember. Um, but I I love coming to, to these conventions, although I'm slowing down uh, this year. I think this will be my, my last convention for a while. I might crash a couple, but... Um, Right now, I'm taking a big turn in my life. For the past few years, um, I've been focusing so much on animation. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry has completely changed. When, when I first started animation, the money was pretty darn good. You can make a, a pretty good living being an animator, but um, then the dot bomb happened. And so a lot of studios went out of business. Um, so there was about a year where I just couldn't get any work. So I started teaching. Um, and when I was teaching, um, I was able to, to then find out that I really enjoy spending time with kids 
and showing them skills that are very useful. And I, I love teaching just anyone in, gen uh, in general anything about art, art history.